Um, you've consistently offered gut checks about hallucinations, lack of progress, uh, the way in which this is not the pipe dream that some envision. Have any of the recent uh, product introductions changed your mind? No, I mean, we're still basically working with the same technology. It's still designed in the same way. It takes a lot of statistics from a lot of words and tries to predict what happens next. And as soon as these things come out, people start playing with them on Twitter and so forth, and you see a lot of examples where they're still making the same boneheaded mistakes as they were before. Nobody has actually solved hallucinations, and I don't think we can with large language models. I think we need genuine innovation here. So what happens is we have a trap right now where people propose things like the humane AI pin, imagining that AI is solved, and then they put it out in the world and we realize, no, it's not solved. And I'm afraid that it hasn't happened yet. I do think eventually we will solve AI. We will have AI that can fulfill all the promises that have been made lately, but I think we're at least a decade away from that. Are you going so far as to argue that the wave of investment that very smart companies are making right now uh, is misplaced? I think people are putting in too much money too fast. I do think it's kind of premature. Um, <clears throat> Sam Altman talked about raising $7 trillion. Um, that's like Series H money um, or something like that when you've really <laughs> established your business model and so forth, and that just hasn't happened here. Um, I've publicly predicted that open AI might turn out to be the we work of AI. People might scratch their heads and say, well, this is a solution in search of a problem. We haven't really found the problem. You know, the whole industry spent something like $50 billion last year, made $3 billion in revenue. That is not sustainable in the long term. So either they have to make it better, which has proven really difficult, or they have to find some killer use case, which they haven't really because the performance is unreliable. So, yeah, my guess is that a lot of investors are going to be left holding the bag. A lot of companies that we interview, a lot of investors that we talk to would disagree with you, Gary. They're so excited about the promise of this technology, well, I've seen the this efficiency. Before. They were all excited about driverless cars. And I said in 2016, this is really not going to work with current technology. And what, are you, still, what is the risk that you're so um, worried about? The, the risk, you said? The risk, yeah. Well, I mean, there's lots of kinds of risk. And on the financial side, there's a risk that this stuff's just not really going to um, sustain itself because it doesn't really work very well. Then there are risks on the um, global stage. So these things can be used for misinformation because people who generate misinformation don't care about accuracy and truth, which are the Achilles heels of these systems. And so we're starting to see it used for elections and scams and so forth. Um, and in the longer term, because we don't really control this AI very well, it's black box AI where you put in inputs, you get outputs, but you don't really understand um, what's going on. You can't make guarantees around it. And so that re raises some safety risks, I think, for the entire planet in the long term. I mean, people also compare it, though, to the steam engine and to electricity and to other the Internet, other major yeah, they don't technological want to mention advances. That they don't want to mention the jetpack, right? I mean, we've had lots of ideas or dirigibles. I actually think dirigibles is the best analogy, right? Until the Hindenburg, it was like, well, this thing scales really fast. We'll make it bigger. It'll be awesome. And then it turned out the dirigibles were not the right way. Um, and instead, you know, we made airplanes. I think that we're in an early uh, version of AI. We will get to a better version. But just assuming that the thing we have right now in hand is the right one, I think is a mistake. And we're seeing that over and over again. You know, the AI pin was a bomb. Um, a company called Ghost that tried to use large language models to make driverless cars failed. Um, stability is having trouble, etc. We're already seeing some signs that things may not be working out. And also a lot of people are leaving open AI. Some of it's around safety, but it's quite a lot of people leaving. If they're really close to AGI, I'm not sure those people will be doing that. I wonder, do you think that's why when we press corporates for examples of use cases, at least at the moment, uh, they keep saying it's around the bend? Uh, well, the, well, you think there'll be well, a moment what... of reckoning where they say, you know what, this is not panning out as we thought? I mean, they're already, you know, privately scaling back um, expectations, according to some reporting that I've seen. They're already saying, yeah, I know you think this stuff's amazing, but l let's, let's be realistic here. Um, you know, they're starting to tell the clients there. The fact is the stuff make, the, the systems, large language models, ma <coughs> make stuff up. And they make, you know, absolutely head-scratching errors. And so if you have a mission-critical application, you can't afford to do that. Like, it might work for customer service for you most of the time, and then it might say something ridiculous that it gets you in trouble. So it's hard to trust these machines. They're fine for things like brainstorming, where there's a human in the loop. But I'm not sure that that's a, you know, trillion-dollar application. You know, people will use it. They'll make some money off of it. It's not that there's zero money to be made.
But when you look at the capital investments of fifty billion dollars this year, and maybe another fifty, or last year another fifty this year, and so forth, like you have to have something huge to justify that, and that thing has to be stable and reliable, and the technology just isn't yet.